What's going on? It's your man, Dr. Will, and you guys know the deal. Let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. I'm here in the beautiful city of Phoenix, Arizona on this beautiful Saturday morning. So wherever you're chiming in from, let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. Before we get into today's topic, let me just thank everybody who took the time out to wish me a happy birthday. I tremendously appreciate that for all the messages, the inboxes. Thank you guys so much. Um, I mean, you know, to wake up um, to so much um, just appreciation, affection and love is is a, a great feeling. Um, I woke up yesterday morning and. Um, and the only thing that I could think about was that, man, I'm happy, right? At the age of 45, um, that I'm I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. And uh, I wish that for everybody, for you to be able to wake up, not just on your birthday, but every morning, like just genuinely happy. And uh, I know 45 um, is not um, an old age. Like I don't feel old or, or anything like that, but where I come from, um, there's a lot of individuals um, that didn't see their 21st birthday, didn't see their 18th birthday. And uh, my best friend um, at the age of 15 was shot and killed right in front of me. And so when I think about that, that was 30 years ago. And uh, when I think about Donnie dying 30 years ago, when I think about everything that I've been able to experience in these 30 years since, you know, that event, um, it's just phenomenal. It's just amazing. And I, I think about that a lot, like everything that I've experienced, if I would have died at 15 when Donnie died, I would have missed out on all of this. And so I'm so appreciative of life and I'm so appreciative of each and every uh, one of you that I'm connected with. Um, it's just a great feeling. And so thank you once again for everybody that wished me a happy birthday. And um, I, I really do. I don't I don't take it. I don't take it lightly um, at all. But today I want to talk to you, you know, uh, this morning uh, I've been uh, doing this is one of my coaching days. So I've been doing coaching calls this morning. And uh, the topic uh, this morning for uh, my mastermind was what is it going to cost you? And that's what I want to talk to you guys about. What is it going to cost you? And we're not going to go in as detailed as we went in the mastermind call, but I just want to give you some things to think about. Like, what is it going to cost you? And, and when I talk about what is it going to cost you for you to create your best life, for you to secure your happiness, for you to wake up every single morning, what does your life need to look like? Who do you need to become for that to happen? What's going on, Leroy? So what's it going to cost you. And let me tell you this, like I told them this morning, it's going to cost you. Watch this now. Whatever whatever life you're wanting to create, whatever life you're wanting to create, whatever happiness looks like for you, whatever success looks like for you, you're going to have to, in effort, put in way more than what you experience. Let me say that again. Get, I'll give you a real quick example. I didn't even use this this morning, but I'll use it right now for you guys. If you have a job, if you're working a regular, you know, nine to five, you have to put in months and months and months, right, of work before you can take a two week vacation. So you have to put in 40, 40 weeks so you can take two weeks. So the concept right there, you have to put in way more, right? You have to put in way more then you get out. But that two week vacation, right? When you get to go to Hawaii, when you get to go to Bahamas, when you get to go to Cancun, when you get to go create those memories, it's a greater feeling than those 40 weeks that you probably worked. But to get those two weeks to say, I'm taking the family and we're going for two weeks, we're going to enjoy each other. We're going to eat at this restaurant. We're going to go shopping at this place. We're going to walk on the beach for you to be able to experience that. It takes a whole lot. It takes a whole lot. 
And I was thinking about this as I was talking to them this morning. This was my business mastermind. And I was telling them about the difference between annual revenue and earnings, annual revenue and earnings to get a nice earning. You got to have a big, right? You have to have a big revenue. And I gave them the example of McDonald's. McDonald's earns annual revenue $21 billion. In their annual revenue, they bring in $21 billion. Okay? I want you to think about this. They bring in $21 billion annual revenue, but their earnings, what they get to keep, their earnings, $5 billion. I want you to get this concept now. They, with all their sales and everything that they do, their annual earnings is $21 billion. What they get to keep, $5 billion. Their marketing and advertising budget it's $1.5 billion. So if you just think about this, they have to invest $1.5 billion just to earn $5 billion. That's just one segment. That's not the health care that they have to pay for for their employees. That's not the building maintenance. That's not the operational, you know, all the operational costs. That's just for marketing and advertising, $1.5 billion for them to earn, to put them in position to earn $5 billion. So how much are you willing to pay for the lifestyle you say you want? How much are you willing to pay? And this is what a lot of people don't realize. You know, I was telling them this morning, you want to build a million dollar business. You want to build a million dollar business, meaning you want to earn a million dollars. What is that going to look like in annual revenue? So when people come to me and they say, hey, my goal is to um, earn a million dollars, then I have to tell them, OK, then we need a plan and a system and a strategy that gets you somewhere between, you know, three to four million dollars. Because once you've paid taxes, your operating costs, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. If, if you go to earn a million and you earn a million, half of that right? It's taxes. So you're at 500K right there. That's just in taxes. So now you're, you know, you're 500K. We're not even talking about the operational costs. Maybe if you have a building that you need to pay your, your lease on or anything like that. So let's say you're paying 10K in your lease, 5K in your lease or whatever. That's 50, that's 50,000 to 60,000 to 120,000, right? So out of that 500,000, that's another chunk. So once again, you got to start looking at the effort. And when I look at people's effort, the effort is not outpacing what they want to earn. Their effort, their energy is not outpacing what they want to earn. You, you want to create a phenomenal life. You got to have phenomenal execution. Like you can't be putting in average and want phenomenal. Like if you want phenomenal, you got to go extraordinary. You, you guys are getting this? If you want a phenomenal life, you got to go extraordinary. Right? You can't even you can't even go phenomenal for phenomenal, right? You can't even be phenomenal and want to earn at a phenomenal level. You got to go beyond phenomenal if you want to earn phenomenal. For them to earn Five billion, they had to bring in 21 billion. 16, 16 billion went to operations and everything else. So when you look at yourself, I don't want any of you to fool yourself. And this is why I teach so much on living from your core. For you to really honestly ask yourself, man, what quality of life do I really want? What quality of life do I really want? Not inspired by anybody else, not, you know, uh, described by anybody else, but you wholeheartedly. You wholeheartedly. I exactly, Marlena. And so 
I want you guys to really think about this. And listen, wherever you, wherever you fall, like there is no wrong answer for your best life. There is no wrong answer. Like your best life is your best life. But I don't want you, so many people I talk to, they get disappointed and I have to come back and say, well, let's look at the effort that you're putting in. Like, what, what do you, like, you want to, you, you want to live this phenomenal life. And when we, we talk about that, usually we're talking about quality of life, what you drive, where you live and all that type of stuff, how you experience life, the restaurants you go out to, the vacations you go out to. You're talking about what a small percentage of the population get to achieve. What a small population, right, percentage of the population get to experience on a normal, on a normal basis. So if you want to enter into that plateau, you want to enter into that realm of where 2%, 5%, 10% of the population live, what type of effort do you think you need to put in? What type of effort do you think you need to put in? Like, I'm serious. Like, that's a question you got to ask yourself. What type of effort am I putting in? Does my effort match my expectation? Does my, does my effort match my expectation? Let me, where's my, oh. Like, a lot of people do this, right? A lot of people create vision boards, right? A lot of people create vision boards, and I always ask them, okay, here's your vision board. Now we're going to put up another board that is called your reality board. And the goal and the game is to get everything off your vision board onto your reality board. But the key is, okay, what system, what strategy are we going to use? How are we going to get this, all of this over to our reality board, right? Right. This happens to be my reality board, but if you have a vision board, what's your plan to get over to, right? To get over to your reality board. So I wanted to fly private, right? Fly private. That's the journey. But what type of life did I have to create? What type of work did I have to put in to be able to do that? What does that look like? Right? What does that look like? If you want to have luxury cars, what does that look like? So if, if you want to, if you want your vision board to be able to become your reality board, you got to ask yourself, is my effort matching my expectation? Is my effort matching my expectation, guys? Like this is all nice, fine and dandy and it motivates you and inspires you. But for most people, it ends up. Um, depressing them because they keep looking at this vision board and it doesn't seem like anything is happening. But more times than not. And, and, and I'm talking about, hey, if you're still talking about, man, I work hard. Man, it's another level. It's, it's another level. It, it's another level of just working hard. The, the question now becomes, what are you working hard at? What are you working hard at? Right? Just, just to make this real, I want to make this real plain. Man, I want to, I want to, let's say you say, man, I want a vacation in the Bahamas for a whole month. I want a vacation in the Bahamas for a whole month. And you're saying to yourself, I work hard at my job. I work hard at my job. Well, you got to ask yourself, okay, if I'm working hard at my job, is the result of working hard at this job going to produce the opportunity to vacation a month in the Bahamas? I don't know. You got to, you got to look at your life. You got to ask yourself. I don't know. You just got to ask yourself, right? The, the answer is in the question, right? So you may be working hard. But, you know, let's look at it and say I'm working very hard. But based on my position, um, 
the highest raise that they're going to give me is X, Y, Z. That's the highest raise they're going to give me. Like the sooner you guys start asking yourself these challenging questions, you can make the right moves. You can make the right moves. I remember I was in the military and I'll let you guys go after this. I was in the military. It was time for me to reenlist. I had done six years already. So I would have 14 years to go to retirement. I would have 14 years to go to retirement. I looked at how I wanted to experience life, what I wanted to experience out of life. And I asked myself, okay, I can give the military 14 more years and then I can collect a retirement check. And then I looked and I said, okay, if I did 14 years and I looked at it, I said, okay, here's the pay scale. If I went all the way to the highest, I said, at that point, if I became a sergeant major, right? If I became a sergeant major from where I was at that time, if I became a sergeant major in the next 10 years, right? In the next 10 years. And then from there, that would put me at 14 years and then have another six years before I retire. I looked at all the pay. I looked at what, what it would amount to. Then I said, okay, if I retired at this age and if I lived another, you know, I would retire at 40 at that time. Um, if I lived another 40 years, that would be 80. So I looked at that and I said, I have 40 years and then I have these 14 years. So in 54 years, I looked at how much I would have earned by retiring, by how much I would have made in that next 14 years. I looked at it. I had to ask myself, Will, in 55 years, do you think that you can earn, and I'll never forget it, I wrote it down, $2.7 million. That's what it would have all added up to if I would have stayed in the military and I were to retire and then get my retirement check for the next 40 years. It came up to $2.7 million. I asked myself this simple question. Do you believe that in the next 55 years, you could earn $2.7 million faster then it would take you the 55 years to earn it going that route. That was my simple math. If I did 14 years remaining in the military, plus another 40 years in retirement, that's 54 years. Do I think I could earn $2.7 million in a faster period of time than it would take me? Like my bet was, do I think I could earn 2.7 in the next 14? Because when I was in the military, although there was nothing wrong with the military, I loved being in the military as it related to pay wise, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how early I came in, no matter how late I stayed in, the salary was the salary. You, we didn't get overtime in the military. You don't get overtime in the military. So it didn't matter if you worked 40 hours or 100 hours, your salary was going to be your salary. It didn't matter how much how less work you did, how much work you did, your salary was your salary. And so when I looked at that, I said, man, I'm, you know, I'm willing to work hard, but I was in the wrong system. If I'm going to work hard, I want to be in a system where my pay is going to be reflective of my hard work. So I said, man, the only thing I saw was to own my own company. I said, okay, so owning my own company, if I'm willing to put in a hundred hours a week, at my own company, I'm, I'm okay. I can generate my income. I can, I can give myself a raise anytime. Like literally not, I can give myself a raise anytime by saying, oh, you know what? Let me go produce something at a higher level. Let me go do something different. Let me go add this training program. Let me go reach out a little bit more. If I work harder inside the system that I'm in right now, it will produce a lot more for me. Versus if I'm in a system, no matter how much I work, the salary is the salary or the promotion is so proportionate like the, the it's, it's, you know, oh, I'm going to give you, you know, an extra hundred dollars, extra thousand dollars for all this more responsibility. I didn't like that deal. I didn't like that deal. That's for me. You got to ask yourself for you. This is this is me. You got to ask you for you. Right. What's the right situation for you? Some people are comfortable in that situation. Some people. Their life like I'm not 
I'm not a proponent on everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. Everybody needs to go do their own thing. There's people, my closest friends, the my closest friends all work traditional nine to five jobs because that's what they uh, love to do. They're good at what they do and it's produced the lifestyle that they've wanted. So I'm not against that, right? I'm not against that. I'm talking to you. If you're the individual that says, hey, this doesn't work for me. This, this is not working for me. Because you're always complaining. Like none of my friends, my close friends that work a traditional nine to five, none of them complain about their job because they love their job. They love what they do. They're not complaining about their job. But if you're a person who's complaining, that just means, man, you know what? I'm I'm in the wrong system. So you need to reevaluate that. But the question is, are you willing to pay the cost, right? For me, I had to leave the comfort. I had to leave the comfort of the military, of that established check every month to follow what I believed in my heart. I was willing at that time, right? Are you willing to pay the cost? What What are you willing to pay? I was willing to give up that comfortability of a guaranteed check to go build my company. And so here we are 15 years later, right? Yeah, is it 15 years, 20, 19? I got out in 2020, 20 years. I got out 20 years ago. I got out 20 years ago. Get out in 2001. So here we are in 2021. So 20 years ago, right? But I was willing for me, I was willing to give up a guaranteed retirement check. I was willing to give up a guaranteed monthly paycheck. So in my mind, I bet $2.7 million on my future. I bet $2.7 million on my future. What are you willing to bet? What are you willing? Are you willing to pay the cost? I was willing to bet $2.7 million on my potential, on my dream. What are you willing to bet? So that's my question. What is it going to cost you and are you willing to pay it? What is it going to cost you and are you willing to pay it? So have a fantastic uh, afternoon, guys. Whatever you do, go out there and enjoy yourself. Uh, wherever you are in the world, go out there and enjoy yourself. But ask yourself this question sometime this weekend. Man, what am I willing to pay? Am I willing to pay the costs? All right, guys, have a fantastic Saturday and I'll talk to you later.